This morning, there is still a boil water advisory for Englewood water customers. The city says they found some E. coli in a water sample there. Right, the alert went out to people as far away as Aurora, Denver, even Lone Tree. I got one in Highlands got Ranch. You, right, okay. I got one too. Right, but those cities clarified that the only water that is contaminated is in part of Englewood. We don't know exactly why the alert went out to so many people. The city of Englewood uh, won't say if they did that on purpose or by mistake, though they say it's better that it went to more people than not enough. As soon as that alert alert went out. It sent off a rush for restaurants to get boiled water so they could stay open last night. Some restaurants have signs on their door saying that the water will only be served by request while the advisory is still in place. Those restaurants used bottled water last night to serve people. We just ran over there, got a bunch of water. Last one's there. It was crazy. It was nuts. It was crazy, yeah. It was. Shelves in grocery stores were cleared out yesterday. As soon as the alert went out, people rushed to the grocery store to stock up on the bottled water. You know, I just take precautions. I don't want my animal getting sick. I don't want to get, I don't want to get sick. The advisory could last between two to three days. Today in Inglewood, there are water distribution centers at the Civic Center there. There's more information on our website about where it's located. A new report lays out the worst case scenario if more people don't get vaccinated against COVID-19 in Colorado. It says hospitalizations this fall could approach the peak that was set in December of last year. That's if vaccination rates remain low and people don't wear a mask. Nine News reporter Kelly Rinky takes a look at the state's goal to prevent a spike from happening again. People are getting sick who really don't need to get sick. Preventing more COVID-19 cases is tough when not enough people are getting the vaccine. And this week we've seen an acceleration of the number of cases and the number of people in hospitals. Jonathan Salmon is the dean of the Colorado School of Public Health. The modeling group actually began its work way back in March of 2020. His group works with state health officials to track the pandemic. Their latest report released this week looks at what could happen if 80% of adults in Colorado got one shot of COVID-19 vaccine by Labor Day and possible consequences if the state doesn't hit that goal. And of course, we show in the report what happens if we just stay on that vaccine trajectory we've been on. And the answer is there'll be, you know, literally thousands of uh, avoidable hospitalizations and of course that means avoidable deaths. This is the worst case scenario. The model found Colorado could see a peak in hospitalizations this fall that comes close to the one in late 2020. That's if vaccination rates stay low and people substantially lower mitigation efforts like mass wearing. The one thing we are seeing now is more and more mandates for vaccines you know, from from major employers, and I think that will make a difference. He says vaccinating 80 percent of adults by Labor Day will prevent a substantial number of hospitalizations through the fall, potentially thousands. We chart things out till November 1 under different sets of assumptions and scenarios, and all of those sort of, you know, say it's not over. In Denver, I'm Kelly Rinke, 9 News. More than 450,000 first doses would need to be administered this month to hit that goal. Less than 250,000 total doses were administered in July. As the, as the pandemic progresses, our goals uh, of what we're trying to do are changing. Anusha Roy has some perspective on what uh, we should really pay attention to. There is one goal that has stayed the same. Keep mortality down. Which is why we've talked so much about hospitalizations. So why is the alarm being sounded on case counts? So keep in mind that that case counts kind of a precursor uh, to hospitalizations. The city of Denver says it's seeing the Delta variant circulate during the summer when respiratory viruses tend not to do as well. We saw them drop last summer. And, it, and it's going up. And for the state, we are seeing cases increase. And, and honestly, just in the last week or so, we have now started to see a, a clear increase in hospitalization. Unvaccinated Coloradans now are really at greater risk than they've ever been since the beginning of the pandemic. But doctors say this is about more than just the unvaccinated. They said keep in mind the immunocompromised who may not have as much of a robust reaction to the vaccine. Kids too young to get their shots. And then what could happen down the line that would impact the community at large. The more people we have unvaccinated, the more infections we have. The more infections we have, the more variants we have. 
And eventually we could have a variant where the current vaccine doesn't work at all. The changing mask recommendations, regardless of vaccine status and talks about case counts and Delta are also meant for prevention. Based on the modeling data that we've seen, we think that we should be in a pretty good place when it comes to hospital capacity. They're not threatened. Uh, at this point in terms of the, you know, the care that they can provide, but we don't want to get there. Doctors say their goalposts haven't changed. It obviously, it's veering us off and that pe more people are getting sick. The virus itself did. You can still enjoy time with your friends and your family, um, but knowing that status of vaccination is a big deal. I think that's something I would include in the equation. And doctors say vaccines still provide pretty high level of, level of protection for people who are fully vaccinated. For the smaller number of breakthrough cases, that's people who are vaccinated who still get the Delta variant. Most of them are mild. Most cases are mild or asymptomatic. Hundreds of parents and students protested in Jefferson County yesterday against the school district's new mask rules. Jeffco is requiring masks for all students 3 to 11 years old and then strongly encourages masks for students 12 and older, regardless of whether they're vaccinated or not. Unvaccinated staff at Jeffco will be required to wear a mask. Those out there yesterday say they just want families to choose whether to wear masks or not. Some say they're considering pulling their kids out of school if restrictions don't end. Denver Public Schools are requiring all students, staff, and visitors, regardless of vaccination status, to mask up at the start of the school year, and all staff have to be vaccinated by the end of September. The new DPS superintendent tells 9 News reporter Jennifer Meckles the feedback in his district is mixed. We listened, we read uh, emails that came in, and uh, while well, I was out and about during this listening tour, and also our internal folks. Um, and I'm going to say that it was a toss up in terms of 50%, 50%, those who wanted to mask and uh, those who wanted to uh, not mask for a lot of other reasons. But Dr. Alex Marrero, the brand new Denver Public School Superintendent, says his decision was made easier when the city of Denver announced the vaccine mandate for all city employees this week, including teachers. So if the city is taking this strong approach, it makes sense for us to, again, follow the guidance, follow the science, but also follow suit, if that makes sense. So how many DPS teachers are vaccinated now? That's a great question. We do not know because internally in DPS, we do not monitor vaccinations. Now we will have to. What uh, needs to be determined is if we're going to collect that data, are we going to be the conduit to the city? So we're working that out with the mayor's office. Also to work out if and how DPS will enforce a vaccine mandate. Ask for the mask mandate. Marrero knows not everyone will like it, but he'll take the criticism if it means keeping in-person learning. Um, and I have to say it, we're not going to be like the other districts who are going to backpedal, right? We're not going to flip flop. We don't want any uncertainty out in our community. So we're starting here and we are hopeful that we're going to continue to be less restrictive. But as long as we could be in person, elbow to elbow, doing what we do best, that's the victory. Jennifer Meckles, 9 News. And we're hearing from the other districts now. Cherry Creek School District will strongly encourage masks in the classroom, but not require them. They are required on all school buses per CDC orders. And Poudre School District in Larimer County says everyone, regardless of vaccination status, has to mask up inside school buildings. We're keeping an updated list of school COVID-19 policies on our website. I know it's a lot to keep up with, but text the word schools to this number 303-871-1491 and we'll send you a link to the latest updates. If Denver's insane housing market made you give up on your home search, realtors say now may not be a bad time to hop back in. The Denver Metro Association of Realtors newest report points out some things are getting back to normal, just not the price of homes. Mm -hmm. Home prices are still up, way up in the metro area. They're up about $100,000 compared to a year ago. The median house went for uh, medium house uh, went for $600,000 last uh, month. Houses are still selling pretty fast, three times faster than they did last summer. It has been like that since May. But realtors say they are seeing supply and demand start to even out now. That is something that is pretty common in late summer months. The end of kind of the buyer frenzy is normally around 4th of July. This year we saw kind of that end happen a few weeks before 4th of July. But, um, you know, I've seen a deacceleration of the market. 
Realtor Andrew Abrams says that he is hopeful the rest of the year will be more normal. He's not expecting prices to take a dive anytime soon, though. But maybe buyers won't have to go to such extreme lengths to land a home these days. And they were extreme. Yesterday, the city of Denver released its five-year plan to address homelessness and housing. It's not the first time the city has put itself on a timeline for a plan like this. Here's 9 News reporter Luis DeLeon. Homelessness is not a new problem in Denver and having a plan to tackle it in a certain number of years is not new either. Wednesday, the city released its new draft of the plan to address homelessness over the next five years. Among other things, the goals include reducing the number of people experiencing unsheltered homelessness by half, cut filed evictions by 25% annually, and quote, measurably end veteran homelessness and add a lot more housing all by 2026. We are looking at adding more than 7,000 affordable homes here in Denver. Britta Fisher is the chief housing officer for the city of Denver. We've already taken hotels and moved them into housing. We want to do more of that. We certainly have um, shot for a, an ambitious goal in this plan, uh, several ambitious goals. And it's not the first time. In 2005, Senator John Hickenlooper, who was Denver's mayor back then, had a 10-year plan to take on homelessness. But back in 2014, nine years into that plan, a nine wants to know analysis found that numbers actually went up since it started. I'll try and say, you know, where we are now after going through a recession like that it invalidates what we did is I think it's an unfair comparison. The recession he said back then was part to blame. And today, advocates, of course, are hoping this plan fares better. But it has so far to go because it's so far behind. Benjamin Dunning is an organizer for Denver Homeless Out Loud. He explains that the goals may prove to be a tall task since he believes the population is growing, among other things. Which has been continuing to grow for the past 25 years. He also hopes the housing units in this plan are owned by the city, so costs are controlled better. The thing that ends homelessness is a place to live. In Denver, for 9 News, I'm Luis De Leon. The plan still has to be adopted by City Council, but before it can be, you can weigh in on the plan until September 3rd. The city will also have two public feedback sessions later this month. You can read the full drafted plan on our website at 9news.com.